hello and welcome to another exciting episode of our bunker show series today we have a special guest uh, all the way from latin america nicolas pasquale uh, joining us here in Kolna, bangladesh uh, nicolas is not just a uh, any traveler he is on a mission to visit every country in the world uh, with 177 countries already under his belt, he is well on his way to setting a Guinness World Record. If any of our viewers uh, have a burning question for Nicholas, uh, please feel free to drop it in the comment section and we will uh, do our best uh, to get it answered live uh, on the show. Your participation makes our interview even more engaging, so don't hesitate to join the conversations. Uh, Nicholas, yeah, uh, it's yes. uh, it's amazing to have you here. Could you tell us uh, what made you start your incredible journey of visiting every country in the world? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, Pradesh, for this opportunity of sharing my story with you guys. You're welcome. Uh, like Pradesh said before, any questions mentioned, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll be very happy through Pradesh to reply everything what you're curious about because this is also the reason why I'm traveling, because I'm curious. Yeah. And this is what push mountains, no? Curiosity. Curiosity is what push every, every one of us to do the things that sometimes we think, oh, this is very, very difficult. Yes, but maybe I can check how much difficult it is. And then you go slowly, okay, is it really that difficult? And then you start breaking every ice cube until you get to the point where it's like, oh, it's all melted. So there's no problems at all. And then you just go smoothly. And my experience, this is what happened to me. and. Uh, here we have the opportunity to share with you guys some of the most interesting places in the world I visit. Uh, some highlights, I don't want to make it that much so. Uh, there is very concrete, uh, you will see pictures in Israel, in Libya, and uh, parts of West Africa, which are very, very interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, and Bangladesh should be there as well. Why not, right? So, uh, as a tennis teacher by profession, mm -hmm. how do you manage to juggle your love for travel with your job? Okay, so um, I normally work during seasons. So, yeah, so let's say if uh, we have the summer is the high season where people used to, you know, like to practice tennis. So I used to work mostly during season and in winter people. <laughs> They don't practice that much, so this makes me rely on the weather also, right? Because if it's raining, you cannot be outside playing tennis. Nobody wants to come to my lessons. So basically, this is what happens uh, normally. So I work during the summer when it's hot, when we can be with shorts. You have very good weather here, so here is hot every day. In Argentina, the winter is terrible, so we cannot enjoy it in the same way according to which month you know drops to us um, but uh, talking more about the financial part of how I can afford to pay for yeah. my trips yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is which is part of the question as well uh, most of the money I make doing tennis lessons I invested and uh, through returns from the financial market I can keep affording giving less lessons you know yeah so yeah this is mostly how can i afford my travels and also through meeting people getting inside an inside of the local culture is also a way to make it more affordable than going to a very fancy hotel where you have a lot of big costs right uh okay uh you have mentioned uh, visiting Africa where you had to survive without many modern facilities for two days. 
could you share more about that experiences experience and how you coped yes I will, I will be glad to share with you this experience was was one of the most important in my life that changed the perception as well i see every country in the world uh you know when i start this journey i was not expecting to have this kind of experience this happened on the way i didn't know it was that difficult to face this kind of things so what i did what, what happened was i got struggle in one island and i couldn't go back to mainland no electricity no water no toilet no internet nothing imagine now we have lights here we are you know we have water if we want if we have a toilet there is nothing no bed so basically uh, I was staying with a local tribe and the local tribe was providing me from fish pork and all the main needs you know um, as well as an experience also they teach me how to fish how to kill a pork how to don't be desperate for things that they're actually not necessary now for example I would like to show you guys something we use every day you guess what it is I will show you this the phone everybody has one of it small bigger smartphone not smartphone but we're always waiting a message from mom from dad from a friend from a girl from a boy whatever you like we use this all the time even when you're watching us you probably are with a phone right now so <laughs> this is my my lesson from this this experience is that we use a lot of things that we believe are important but they're not they're definitely not so after this experience what i do with the phone i try to read i cannot i depend on it okay right because i need to travel i need to check maps i need to check flights but I use it only when it's really necessary. So this is my main lesson of the, this amazing journey, apart from killing pork and fishing. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Uh, could you please uh, share us with your observation on life in Africa and your experiences uh, interacting with the people there? Yes, so um, this is one of the also very what I we call in Argentina the B side, you know the B side because it's like what sometimes people don't ask about, right? It's a very good question. So culturally, when I got stuck in this island, for example, people don't talk my language. They don't speak Spanish. They don't speak English. So how do we communicate by signs? Just show them signs, show them like, okay, so this, I need food, I need water, I need a shower, I need, you know, all by jest. And the people, they have to be helpful to understand you because it's not easy for them. You know, I can, we come from a civilized world and we go there, it's uncivilized. In the case of this island, I'm not saying all Africa. Africa is, it's important to clarify, is 54 countries divided in more than seven regions. We have West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, Northern Africa, Sahel area. Okay, so we have different regions and each region is different. Culturally, religious, food, the colonizer that they had was different, so they speak a different language. So my main attach was with English speaking countries because I could communicate better with them. Mostly were colonized by the British, unfortunately. As you know, here you guys, you have a story with the British as well. These people, they were everywhere and uh, not judging, just saying, just saying facts. Okay, this was part of the British Empire, as well as half Africa and half of the world, which is nowadays an advantage because thanks to that, we can communicate you and me right now. You can watch me now. I can talk to you. You understand me, you know, so this is the, the good side of a global world right that we can all speak one language and uh yeah i think it's one of the most most interesting facts is, is that culturally i could connect more with people speaking the same language no yeah so yeah you describe yourself as easygoing, sociable, adventurous, and fun-loving. 
how do these qualities help you uh, in your travels and when meeting people from different cultures well um I think uh, it's very important always to have a smile on you everywhere you go, you know. The perception of a human being smiling is much better than a perception of someone that is not smiling. Just try to go to the supermarket here uh, in Kulna, for example, we are here in Kulna, right? So, but I believe if you go to the supermarket and say, Hi, how are you? I would like to buy this or that. Even if the person don't know English, will be smiling to you. Yeah. Because it's, we are humans, we have empathy. And this empathy gets through our energy. So if they feel you're energetic, you have your... This is a very important skill. And uh, this you don't learn in the school. So it's part of life. Uh, probably your parents. Your parents are the most important, whatever your religion is, I don't mind. But the most important thing is your family. Okay? I don't care where you come from. I don't care which color, which religion, whatever family is the most important thing so from the family has to come a smile from a smile you can open yourself to the rest of the world so this is the main important message i always try to bring in all my interviews and uh british we've been talking about this before yeah. we will talk about this more often we will have more calls and we will share and spread smiles everywhere in the planet earth so this smile makes us, like you say, British, joyful, smiley, happy, fun. Because if you're laughing, it's because you have fun, right? Otherwise. So thank you for answering us. Welcome. Uh, you have already visited 177 countries. All right. Uh, which is the highest in Argentina? What keeps you motivated? Uh, mm -hmm. to continue your journey and achieve your ultimate goal. Okay, so you were asking me, correct me if I'm wrong, which is the highest, uh, highest I visit? Uh, all, highest uh, mm -hmm. visited, uh, uh, highest, uh, you, you have already visited 177 countries, yes. which is highest in Argentina? You are highest. The, yeah, highest uh, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so for us, you mean as, a, yeah, as for Argentina? For, for Argentina. Argentina. So for us, um, well, the highest for us is basically. Well, we don't. To be honest, we don't have a in Argentina. We don't have a highest uh, achievement for uh, visiting a, a certain country itself. No. Yeah. Is, a, is an achievement in the in the whole thing to visit for me in this case I'm trying to be the first Argentinian to visit every country in the world so as such is is very important for me to to share this with you guys and to have this opportunity that you get to know me as well uh, and when, like we said before right it spreads smiles constantly and uh, and yeah um, most of the times we are not uh, aware of how lucky we are yeah. in my case I consider myself very lucky to be here with you British and uh, have the chance no, to, to, to share all these experiences and knowledge uh, and yeah and also yeah. 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 yeah yeah I think that, that's that's very important okay. thank you and okay mm -hmm. Uh, let's check our comments. Okay. It stopped, no? No, 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 no. We didn't stop. So, and the next question is: You you mentioned that uh, through your travels, you have realized that we are all similar, no matter where uh, we are from and how we look. Could you share some memorable experiences mm. uh, that uh, reinforced this belief? Mm -hmm. Yes, so I think, you know what, after all these years of traveling, eight years on the road, I can share with you that uh, we are all the same. Yeah. Look, I'm going to say something that might sound a bit strong, right? Uh, everybody knows Lionel Messi, for example. Yeah. I'm wearing right now a shirt from 
my country so you can identify I'm from Argentina as well so I love my country uh, but we really love football and uh, you might be asking what this has to do with with British just ask me well a lot I'll tell you why Lionel Messi he might be a best player in the world he might all the Ballon d'Or that you want he won the World Cup everybody loves him you know but he's gonna die same as me and British and you guys that you're watching so it doesn't really matter what you do you're gonna die and you cannot stop it you cannot pass to someone else your disease if you get cancer you have to deal with it you cannot say okay I will pay you two million dollars so you can carry my cancer and I can be free no it's not, that kind of deals doesn't exist yet at least I trust in technology but not that much and so not at that level right so what I'm trying to share with you guys is that no matter how rich you are, no matter how poor you are, no matter which color, what we are the same. The same thing. We all like food. We all like to be with our loved ones. We all like to have sex. We all like to have a nice shower, sleep. So what's really the difference between us? What, what, where, you know, the, sometimes politics, uh, you know, this picture that you can see right now on the screen you can see the picture for example of Israel you know there's a war going on between Israel and his neighbors without talking about politics itself we're talking about facts there is a war yes between which countries okay we can mention between Israel and Palestine who is right who is wrong that's not my job what I'm saying is it doesn't matter they're both gonna die so does it really matter which side is it doesn't matter it's whole you know politics uh so my advice is take care about you guys take care about your loved ones and uh enjoy as much as you can take it less serious you know uh okay uh can you share your thoughts uh about the people of bangladesh and the introduction you have had with them during your time in our country uh yes uh, well, first of all, everywhere I go, every time I say, oh, I'm from Argentina, people immediately change. Yeah. Immediately. They were already friendly, but then they become extra friendly, almost following me. They're like, oh, where are you going? Do you want me to take you? You want to eat somewhere? Oh, can I take a picture with you? Oh, I also want a picture. Oh, I have a cousin that also would like to take a picture. Let me call my cousin. My cousin lives 10 blocks from here. Yeah, but I'm, I need to take a bus. I cannot wait for you. It's not that I'm a bad person, you know, but imagine that, you know, I'm traveling. If you say, okay, his cousin is in the toilet, we wait for him. But his cousin is at home watching TV. He doesn't know there is a random guy from Argentina walking in the street. So what I'm saying is I really love this fanatism for my country, especially. I feel very welcome by British, for example, here, by many of you guys that have opened me the doors of your house give me their food give me your hospitality teach me about your country you know uh, i think it's um it's a, it's a privilege for me to be here surrounded by all of you uh even if i cannot see you i can feel that at some point if it's not today it's tomorrow you're going to be watching this and uh, i want to say thank you for watching this thank you for paying attention of whatever i'm telling you i hope at least two percent of all the speech can keep with you and make something you know yeah uh, today Nicholas you had uh, the opportunity to explore the majestic Sundarbans we'd love to hear about your experiences yeah well my experience today in the national park was amazing the Sundarbans is one of the most interesting places because of the mangroves it has the highest mangroves in the world yeah. oh man I haven't seen that high before huh? so there's only one thing I have a complaint. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I couldn't see the tiger. <laughs> yeah, it hardly seen. British, did I you know that there is seen. 114 tigers? Did you know that? Uh, I don't know, uh, know about the exact uh, number uh, of the tigers uh, that are remaining now. So. There, is, there, is, uh, there is only 114 tigers in this park. Yes. The other ones are in Nepal and India. And that's it maybe a few but it's a different ethnic you can find in sri lanka but it's not the same yeah. because this 
in my language in Spanish we call it tigre, which is tiger, yeah. de Bengala. Bengala. Bengala Mark, means Mark, from Bengal. Mark, right? Mark, Bengal, yeah. Bengal, exactly. Yeah. In my language it's tigre de Bengala. And there's a lot of jokes with it. Because we in Argentina we say, oh, who do you think you are? You think you are Tigre de Bengala? It's like, do you think <laughs> yeah. you are? But nobody knows they are in Bangladesh, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they know, because now they are watching this. Yeah. So now they know. So this makes it interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next question is, uh, yesterday you had the chance to explore Kuna. Could you share us with places uh, a, uh, or uh, aspects of Kuna captivated you uh, the most during your visit? Well, uh, for me, after visiting 177 countries, come to a country where both religions can live together with no issues, is something that caught my attention. You know? Yeah. Because uh, you have Hinduism, you have Muslims, and many other religions that we I don't even know. Maybe you guys also don't know. Uh, don't look at me like this. Maybe you guys also don't know. But it doesn't matter. I'll tell you two that I know. Hinduism and Muslim. Okay, so for example, whatever is your choice, you probably have a friend from the other side. And this other side, you don't even call it the other side because it's weird. What this means, that they are together. And this is what is beautiful. So I visit Hinduism temples, I visit Muslim uh, temples, and uh, I cannot tell, for example, I like this one more than the other one. Why not? Because I don't look about the architecture. What I look is the vibe. How do I feel? Do I feel judged when I go there? Do I feel welcome? It's the same. Because when I leave Bangladesh, I will say, oh, people from Bangladesh. I will not say Hinduism people from Bangladesh, Muslim people. No, 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 no. Because no need to do that. So I think this fact makes the country very interesting, very beautiful, diverse, and welcoming for tourists like me, that I'm not none of them yeah uh, so it's interesting to uh, hear that argentina um, recently established an embassy in bangladesh after winning the fifa world cup uh, what effect do you uh, think this will have on the relationship between the uh, between two countries and how uh, might it benefit travelers like uh, yourself in the future well this is incredibly interesting i will share with you the following what are you waiting guys to come to visit my country go apply go talk to them what do i need to make my visa i want to visit argentina and argentina people if you tell them you're from bangladesh they will be so happy to have you at their home they will give you food until you explode so i think it's a it's a culture of hospitality as well and uh we have a big brotherhood here between Bangladesh and Argentina and this was you know football brings us together fine but now we're building something genuine that makes us even closer we have an embassy this this went too far it went too far which is amazing so now it's time for for business it's time for friendship it's time for tourism take the advantage go to the embassy ask what do I need to visit this country I saw a video of this guy Nicolas Pasquale he was telling me about that I should, and then you go, I say, okay, fine. We don't know this guy, maybe they will say, but we can help. And they will give you a list of things to do. You apply, book a ticket, save your money. Yeah. And see you there. Okay, Nicholas, uh, thanks for your nice answer. Uh, would you uh, be willing to share a song from your country? Uh, with our viewers and it would be a great chance for them to experience a piece of your culture. Uh, after years, uh, one request to you that uh, could you please provide an English translation uh, of those uh, lyrics. Uh, lyrics? No, it means uh, could, could you please uh, uh -huh. uh, provide an English translation uh, yes. for our viewers uh, who may not understand your uh, song uh, uh, lyrics means uh, the words of your songs yeah songs yeah so yeah, songs with english translation okay you mean uh songs uh from argentina yeah, right from, from the argentina and uh, after singing it uh, you have to translate it for our viewers okay well i will try my best this is a challenge i haven't 
I hadn't had before, but it makes it interesting. So, well, for example, we have some songs uh, we like to sing. Uh, they're very challenging. Yeah, normally, like normally we like to sing it when we, we go to the stadium, right? Yeah. And we play football matches, but it makes no sense. It makes the, the song makes no sense, but for us it does make sense. For example, you know, Argentina is a neighbor country with Brazil, right? So people used to sing Brazil. <laughs> Tell me what it feels. Yeah. To have in your house your father. So this is like a provocation to our neighbor country. Yeah. We love them, but it's just fun. Yeah, it's yeah, for absolutely. fun, right? They do the same with us and it's fine. It's nothing personal. It's just, you know, competition, you know, in a healthy, normal way. Yeah, so yeah. I remember I have a, a nice anecdote with singing this song, you know. There is a, a football player that you probably know. It's called Neymar Jr. You know, Neymar Jr. Yeah, is a very know, talented know, Brazilian yeah. football player. Uh, he was playing, you know, the World Cup. The World Cup was in um, 2014, was played in Brazil. Yeah. Argentina lost the final against Germany. But the semi-final, Argentina played with... Sorry, the semi-final, Germany played with Brazil. And yeah. Neymar, which is the main star from the... Or back then, at least, was the main star from the football team, the national team. He broke his back, right? He had an injury and he broke his back. So the, the Argentinian fans, they bought a skeleton because he broke his back yeah. and they went to the stadium with the skeletons like, hey, where are you Neymar? Where are you Neymar playing with a skeleton? This is too much, you know, yeah. but it's just a joke. But the joke is too intense sometimes. So, I mean, it's only for fun. We love Neymar. He is a great star. I wish I played football like him, you know. So probably he's a great guy as well, big friend of Messi and fan as well. So there's nothing to say. Just sorry Neymar for this, and uh, thanks for making us happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we are already at the end of our show. Uh, if uh, our viewers uh, have any questions for us. Uh, please drop it uh, in the comment section and we'll try to uh, answer it. Yeah. Uh, probably there isn't uh, any request or any comments uh, for us this time. So we may finish and uh, thank you, Nicholas, for sharing your incredible journey and insights uh thank you so today. much guys and uh today your passion for travel and cultural cultural exchange is truly inspiring uh we wish you the best uh, of luck as you uh, continue on your quest to visit every country in the world and to all the viewers uh thank you for tuning in uh, stay tuned for more fascinating interviews from inspiring people uh, around the globe and goodbye for now and once again uh, thank you Nicholas thank you so much yeah. for let me let me you're always welcome yeah for let me explain all the stuff and, and share with you guys some of my thoughts thank okay. you very much okay goodbye for now <laughs>